drop the area. Just remember that everybody out here is a safety NCO, and that if you see anything unsafe, go ahead, cease action, call cease fire, correct it, and then drive on. It's a mission from there. My name is Lieutenant Mark Shepard. I'm the Scout Platoon Leader, Headquarters Company, 4th Battalion, 325th Infantry. What we got here today is a squad, squad live fire exercise. And what we've been given each squad leader is this scenario or mission, and it's as follows. Contact with the enemy has been broken. Latest intel indicates that he has withdrawn to the vicinity of King Abdul Aziz Naval Base. He is waiting to be reinforced before counterattacking to regain key terrain in Al Jabal. He is expected to have OPs and fire team size positions positioned throughout the area. He is known to use obstacles to reinforce his defensive position. These obstacles usually include tank ditches tied in with concertina. You are the lead squad of your platoon moving to regain contact with the enemy. Now primarily, we shift to the terrain model to get a better view of what each squad is to do. Basically, the uh, squad is uh, to come to the assembly area. They'll receive their ammunition, and uh, they're also giving a safety briefing at that point in time. They're to uh, lock and load at the assembly area. They'll come forward, and a fire uh, traveling overwatch, fire team wedges out to the uh, berm, the 200-meter berm. At that time, They'll drop off an M60, and uh, the weapon squad leader will be there to supervise the firing. They'll have a left limit of 350 degrees and a right limit of uh, 10 degrees. To the objective area, the squad will continue out to a certain point where there are some barrels with some netting over it. Uh, at that point in time, they are considered to be well con uh, concealed, whether it be a fold or a backside of a hill. The range was flat, so we had to uh, put something in there where they would be uh, considered an assault position that runs the entire length of the range. From there, they would send a, uh, their alpha team forward, and they would uh, throw a grappling hook while the Bravo team would stay in the area covering or supporting them. The grappling hook would go over, they would uh, then pull on the grappling hook line to ensure that there were no booby traps. At that point in time, when they were uh, sure that there weren't any booby traps, silently the alpha team would come up and cut, make a breach in the wire. Uh, from the time, we give them a time limit uh, of 90 seconds, and that's from the time they start cutting the wire until the last man in the squad reaches through the other side of the wire. What happens as soon as the uh, alpha team has gone, has cut completely through the wire, the Bravo team picks up and goes and uh, gets online on this side of the wire. The alpha team follows up and goes on this side. The machine gun will initiate fire once the first man has gone through the wire. He hits this bunker and his cue to fire is from a uh, pull cord that is back here on the second berm connected to a target which will raise up as the first man goes through the uh, wire. It will raise up the 60 will initiate fire. The cue for the 60 to shift fire to the other bunker is when the first man in each fire team moves forward. The M60 will shift fire and thereby hitting uh, the targets on the opposite side. As, it, as the squad fire and maneuvers through squad leader fire uh, team leader command, they will move forward and they will consolidate on the other side of the objective. They will consolidate, the squad leader will go ahead and get uh, the ACE report. Once the ACE report is complete, the uh, squad is then rotted off the range They'll come back through the breach, straight to the ammo point, uh, give the ammo point any 
unexpended rounds and they'll continue there to the after action review which would be inside this uh, area. Once uh, the after action review is completed, uh, the leaders will make a determination on whether or not the uh, squad has uh, met the standards.